Good morning, everybody. This is Panama Bartholomew with the Building Decarbonization Coalition, and welcome to our Building Decarbonization Coalition Presents. We have just, I think, a fantastic session today um, with uh, the organization Block Power. Um, their, their head of engineering, Dom, is here to talk to us. Um, it's a very, very exciting um, exciting day. I think if um, if anybody has buzz in this community right now, it's definitely Block Power. They're doing some amazing stuff, combining um, old techniques of community organizing with new techniques of machine learning. It's um, incredible work that uh, Block Power has underway. So we're excited to have them. Thanks for joining us, Dom. Um, I am going to um, just give a little bit of background on the organization and the and the BDC. Um, so the Building Decarbonization Coalition is a coalition of utilities and manufacturers of heating equipment, uh, the design and construction community, local governments, and NGOs, uh, all working together to try to eliminate emissions from the built environment. Um, we released a roadmap at the beginning of 2019 focused on California and how California can completely eliminate pollution um, from its built environment, coming from its buildings. And in that roadmap, we laid out a series of uh, targets that we think that the state should adopt in order to be able to um, to be able to attain a total elimination of emissions by 2045 or sooner. Uh, we said that we need to be stopping the expansion of the gas network by implementing zero emission building codes for all building types. Um, and we also said that we need to be implementing a series of programs so that we can be reducing emissions um, from the built environment so that we're ramping it down so that by 2045 or sooner we've completely eliminated emissions. And that'll be a whole mix of policies and programs related to incentives and financing and rates um, and, and, and a whole nother number of policies on top of that. Inherent behind these numbers is also the recognition that there's some key technologies that are going to have to have significantly more market share than they do right now for to achieve these goals. And so we as a coalition um, also adopted um, some goals for um, market share for heat pumps for space heating and heat pumps for water heating. And that by 2030, we'll have gotten those to 100% market share in California. Um, and that'll allow us really to be on the path towards eliminating emissions um, by 2045 or sooner. Um, behind those numerical goals, though, we recognize there is a series of, uh, of, of um, industry um, goals that really need to be achieved in order for us to meet those numerical goals. And they're up here on the screen. And just briefly, it's, um, you know, number one is significantly raising awareness um, across all players in this space, from policymakers to installers, builders, um, consumers, everybody um, needs to have a better understanding about the benefits of all electric living and all electric building. Um, goal number two is, um, you know, customers have to have a good value proposition from building electrification and building decarbonization. You know, it's not going to work if they're worse off after we've electrified their home or commercial building. Uh, number three, we need to make sure that the people that are designing, building these buildings and installing these appliances have a good value proposition from building electrification as well. Um, we got to make sure that we're actually building a sustainable industry and in building electrification. And that has to be based on the expectation of being able to make profit from electrification, particularly compared to natural gas profits. Number four, we need to have a supply chain that is really robust and is ready to supply the scale um, of installations um, and changes that we need in order to meet the transition's goals. Um, inherent in this is also us getting barriers to the supply chain out of the way, as well as really providing um, to the supply chain the certainty they need to be able to know where California and other states are going on decarbonization so that they can plan their manufacturing infrastructure to get it ready um, to be able to supply the appliances we need. And then number four or five, we need to really align policies to meet our goals. We need to have our affordable housing policies, our building policies, our building code policies, our energy efficiency, our air quality policies, and our climate policies all aligned so that we're going in the same direction um, for building decarbonization to really push it. This webinar series is just one part of our effort around our first goal, around increasing awareness. This webinar series is an opportunity for us to bring in top thinkers, leaders in the space, 
people that are doing this, people that are talking about this, really bringing in the shining lights of building decarbonization to come and share what they're working on and where they see the market going. We have a fantastic webinar coming next month. I'm very excited um, to announce. It'll be our first 90 minute BDC presents just because there's so much to talk about here, but it's gonna be the retrofit ready heat pump water heater, 120 volts to the future. Um, we're gonna have in the three organizations, the three manufacturers that are have announced that they're going to be producing um, retrofit ready heat pump water heaters. Um, these are retro, also sometimes called plugins, able to plug in um, to your standard um, electrical outlet. Um, and we are gonna be joined by the New Buildings Institute, who is the um, host of the Advanced Water Heating Initiative to talk about that initiative. And then we're gonna have the manufacturers um, talk about these new offerings that they're bringing to the market. This has been three years in the making and we're very excited for the partnership with NBI and to bring in these three fantastic leading manufacturers to talk about, um, to talk about the new offerings that are coming. So you can sign up for that webinar at buildingdecarb.org, upcoming events, um, and uh, we hope that you join us for that webinar as well. So just some logistics for today before I hand it over to Dom. Um, everyone is muted. Um, we had over 318 organizations register for this, so we just can't have anybody off mute. Um, so we will read your questions. Please put your questions in the chat or the question area, and then we're happy to, um, we're happy to um, ask Dom those questions when he's done with this presentation. Um, this webinar is being recorded, and if you are a member of the coalition, um, you're able to have access to that recording. And so we would um, love for you to be a member of the coalition. Um, not only do you have access to these webinar recordings, but you have a lot of other great benefits that you can see um, on the website. So we hope that you consider joining the Building Decarbonization Coalition. It's incredibly affordable and you get a lot of great benefits out of it. So you can go to buildingdecarb.org slash join and um, we will, uh, we'd be love to talk to you about what membership entails and love to get you a copy of Dom's presentation he's about to give. So I am going to stop showing uh, my screen and I'm gonna um, set Joey up to be able to, uh, to set up Dom. Um, and as I do my, um, my introduction. So uh, Joey, you should have um, now the ability to be able to share your screen. There it is, great. So um, Dom LaFure is joining us. Um, he is head of engineering or something like that, he'll correct me, um, chief of engineering at Block Power. Um, Block Power, amazing organization. They're focused on electrifying affordable housing. Um, they're bringing brand new techniques to bear. They just got a big $63 million Series A fundraising round. They're expanding to multiple states beyond New York and California into the Midwest and other areas. Um, just taking incredibly innovative approaches to this. So I'm so excited that Dom here um, is here to talk about how they're approaching affordable housing electrification, um, what they're doing and what they're planning for the California and other markets. So with that, I'm gonna stop my camera and hand it over to Dom. Dom, thank you so much for joining us. Please take it away. Thank you, Panama, and uh, good morning, um, everyone. And uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to present today. Um, I'm, I'm very excited and honored to, uh, to share Power's experience so far with electrification and uh, share it with the members of the Building Decarbonization Coalition. Um, no other fact that I will be preaching to the choir, right? That's pretty, pretty uh, obvious to me now. Um, and, uh, and the reason for that is uh, basically we are sharing the same mission, right? Block Power and the coalition are sharing the same mission, uh, which is to make uh, buildings and community uh, communities uh, healthier, uh, safer, and provide uh, affordability. Um, uh, so. Um, again, you, I hope you're going to uh, learn a few a few things today. And uh, as Panaba uh, explained, I have a, uh, a presentation, several slides. I would be uh, um, really happy to take uh, some questions uh, uh, at the end. Uh, moving to the next slide. So uh, the the new administration, as well as uh, many states and uh, local governments. Um, have a, uh, goals to move away from fossil fuels, right? Which is a very good thing. Um, 
there are mandates uh, also and uh, clear goals. Uh, I think uh, Panama explained uh, a couple of them, um, which are our targets, right? Um, so uh, things are happening at the grid level. I think the first um, opportunity or, or um, ways to actually achieve those goals is to clean the, gr uh, the, the grid, right? That's one. And the, pres the presentation today is uh, rather going to focus on, on at the building level, right? What is going to happen at that micro level that I define as, as a building or the community or, or portfolios of buildings. Right? And uh, the goal, uh, the goals being what they are uh, with timeline that are pretty tough, right? Uh, we need to make it fast, efficiently, and as with little money as uh, as possible, right? And this is particularly true for uh, low and medium income buildings, uh, LMI buildings, and that will be you know the the, the center of that of the presentation today. So. Um, for the past uh, two years, uh, Block Power has been uh, really focusing on uh, electrification and bringing uh, a heat pump as, as a core of its activities. Um, so heat pumps, uh, just a very quick uh, uh, definition of our, our system, a high efficiency electric system that can provide heating, cooling, and uh, also prepare domestic hot water. So uh, in, in our view, this is a clear answer uh, to uh, residential buildings. Uh, in terms of market study, I put a few uh, uh, numbers here. Uh, definitely uh, the professionals uh, who, who do those type of market studies see the huge increase in uh, sales uh, of this uh, uh, type of HVAC systems. We're talking of, of almost a uh, hundred billion dollars uh, for annual sales by 2023. Those numbers were uh, provided uh, a year ago pre uh, uh, prior to uh, to COVID, so uh, there might be a, a slight um, uh, update today, maybe to push it to 2024. Uh, by the way, today is an interesting, uh, talking about COVID, uh, an interesting uh, anniversary, that's a one-year anniversary of the uh, COVID uh, uh, really hitting hard, unfortunately, our, our, our country. Um, and talking about electricity, there's another, today's another anniversary, um, not as, as joyful either, but uh, about uh, Fukushima, uh, the 10 year anniversary of uh, Fukushima catastrophe. Um, so all, all those things uh, being said, um, let's look in the future uh, on a brighter, uh, brighter side. Uh, let's move to the third slide, please. Um, so uh, about um, a few words about, about Block Power. Um, so the company has been founded in uh, uh, 2013. Uh, so we are still moving, slowly moving away from the uh, startup mode. Uh, we are a Brooklyn-based uh, company, a clean tech company uh, that provide uh, uh, services uh, to make sure that uh, buildings and mostly uh, uh, buildings that are underserved um, to uh, have their uh, tenants and occupants uh, reaching uh, a decent level of comfort and uh, having the possibility to lower the, uh, the energy bills. Um, so originally the, the, build, the, the building, our company have been backed up by, uh, um, uh, by investors such as uh, Airbnb, Lyft, uh, Uber and uh, Facebook. Uh, more recently, and as Panama um, explained, uh, two weeks ago we received uh, uh, the confirmation of our Series A uh, investors and other investors have been uh, helping us, uh, such as AmFam, uh, the Kapoor and Smith Foundation, as well as Goldman Sachs, have been chipping in <laughs> in our company and uh, and help us uh, moving forward with uh, with our goals. Um, altogether, the company have a, has a um, completed uh, over a thousand projects. Uh, as we started, um, heat pumps were not as uh, as trendy, I would say. So those projects uh, include. Um, uh, lighting and other type of uh, um, of energy retrofits, but uh, these past two years, again being the focus, uh, we are increasing that number <clears throat> with uh, mostly electric electrification uh, projects. Um, uh, as of today, we are 39 employees, um, uh, about double what we were uh, two years ago. Uh, next slide. So um, how can we uh, address the uh, LMI communities, right? Uh, we need to first understand 
what what is going on uh, in energy uh, retrofit or re how to retrofit a, a building with any type of energy uh, uh, measures. Um, so the, the issue that we have identified really reside in the fact that the industry itself is fragmented and heavily fragment, fragmented. Um, we have companies um, who does who does uh, market studies, um, others uh, do the outreach to uh, building uh, owners, um, do uh, uh, consulting, energy consulting, design. Um, we have different uh, uh, financing uh, entities uh, toward the project, contractors. So all of those entities, or you know, try to partner to and have the same goal for the for the building, <laughs> uh, for the project is to build that electrification building, right? Um, so the the issue that we are having is. Um, each of those uh, entities are on their own, basically. They have their own, they take their own risks. Uh, they have their own responsibilities. And unfortunately, uh, the information about the building and, and the data that should be carried over from the uh, project development to the construction is, is not, uh, is not uh, carried over, right? So it means that uh, each in, uh, individual entity is taking um, is asking the the building somehow the building owner somehow to pay to pay for that premium in terms of insurance in terms of of uh, risk mini, uh, mitigation. Although uh, this uh, this system is a burden to I would say any type of building owners right this is particularly um, uh, difficult for LMI uh, buildings uh, building owners. So uh, moving to the next slide, so what is the solution? So uh, block power, um, really this is part of our uh, DNA, right? Just to help uh, uh, communities who are underserved, right? To, to make sure that new technologies are available to everyone, to all, right? Um, so we built a platform um, to uh, streamline that, that entire process again from um, the initiation, uh, the outreach of the building owners to the construction and even post-construction, right? And um, this platform really resides on, and is really built on uh, sharing a common uh, data, set, uh, data set to all the actors and to all the players in, in, the, in the project. Moving to the next slide. Um, so as a matter of fact, um, you know, we uh, we provide um, and we have implemented this platform uh, a few years back. It took us about three years to to put it together. We implemented in a large program, uh, large programs. Uh, one being uh, the program for the New York City Mayor's Office of Sustainability, uh, where we were able uh, to uh, to use that that platform and uh, generate uh, uh, over 700 projects. Um, so. We are coming in with uh, the goal of electrification with, with this great tool. Um, so this system, as I mentioned, allows uh, all the players around a, a project uh, to access data, right? So there's no distortion in the data. Uh, we all, all the players will have to trust that, that data or act on the data if they feel that this is not absolutely correct. Um, so this is a huge plus that, that we are bringing. This platform is uh, available, uh, we're using cloud, uh, cloud uh, computing, uh, as well as machine learning to analyze the data. And um, uh, this platform is available uh, via mobile phones as well. Um, another thing also that we uh, put together, um, and it's really at the core of Block Power's uh, activity or, or, or uh, as an entity, is the fact that um, we are, we are like five companies within one company, right? Uh, in addition to that tool and that great platform, we do provide all the steps of, of the project, all the phases that goes with a, pro with a, with a project, starting from um, you know, our outreach, um, going uh, to um, a technical an analysis, such uh, this is what my, my team uh, under engineering is doing, just to calculate the, the projections and so on. Uh, we do have a, a financing uh, department, a finance department uh, within the block power, everything under one umbrella. 
um, construction management and, and tracking also the performance. Uh, so that aspect, that human aspect, I would say, of uh, demonstrating that a, a streamlined process can actually work also involves uh, humans behind computers and, and working together as a team. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned, we, uh, we are using advanced technologies. Um, and uh, uh, all right, so uh, we are using, uh, for instance, uh, uh, I, uh, IoT, which is Internet of Things. So to uh, originally, uh, so about like four years ago, um, we used those, uh, those systems, uh, which are basically devices that we um, install in buildings really early in the process as we are developing a project. They are in the form of sensors, for instance, that capture the temperatures, uh, relative humidities, uh, CO2 levels, and so on, to, uh, to assess the current conditions of the building. Right. Um, and instead of making assumptions or an, an energy modeling, we are actually base our recommendations. Um, uh, we base them on data, uh, which is a more solid uh, uh, and custom uh, approach to uh, to, uh, a cost, to 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 a project. Um, so what uh, what we all continue to actually do, um, you know, along with uh, the assessment, we use the same um, IoT devices to commission a project. For instance, we have an electrification project. We install heat pumps. We use the same uh, technology of IoT devices uh, to measure the uh, the uh, the actual uh, parameters to make sure that uh, we are in line with uh, what is the intended uh, design. And uh, later on, even after uh, commissioning, we use the system, uh, depending on what type of energy programs, if, for instance, you have utility uh, program that requires a measurement and ver verification uh, one or two years after the uh, completion of the project, we do have access to data, right, to confirm the savings. Um, and now, you know, with, uh, um, with the new technologies that we have in terms of uh, heat pumps, um, a lot of, uh, in, uh, I mean, because it's electric, there's a lot of flexibility uh, to uh, manage, control those systems and also to do some monitoring. So uh, manufacturers of uh, heat pump manufacturers uh, came up also with a, with a platform, IoT-based um, uh, devices uh, to do the same functionality, but everything is embedded into uh, the heat pumps. Um, so great, we don't have to pay for extra uh, extra dollars to um, uh, to purchase um, uh, separate devices. Everything is embedded. Um, so very, very cool technology. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so our our data solution um, um, really uh, evolves ar around two uh, two product. One is uh, block power targets. Uh, which is a, a machine learning um, uh, application. And uh, what we do, we collect uh, public data about building um, building information, mostly building data, uh, the, the size, the type of heating system they have, and so and so on, to um, narrow down our, our search, I would say, right? And, and find the, the, the greatest candidates, uh, building candidates for electrification. So we do that and we work uh, um, also with a CRM tool. We are using uh, uh, Salesforce um, uh, to do that. So that's for uh, the target, right? That helps with the outreach uh, to uh, uh, LMI customers, for instance. Um, and the second application we have is Block Maps. Uh, it's a Python uh, application. And uh, the same thing, right? We're using uh, pu uh, public data uh, to a build uh, basically a model to estimate how much consumption uh, a building currently have and also to project um, energy uh, consumption. Uh, so um, again, through uh, machine learning, we are able to do that. Uh, and our accomplishment, one of our accomplishments uh, we are very proud of is uh, uh, we were able to um, uh, produce uh, that type of uh, reporting or that type of platform on over 30,000 uh, buildings in New York City. Uh, next slide. Um, so at this stage, you understand that we are working with uh, advanced uh, technologies, advanced tools. Um, but uh, what do we do, right? Now that we have the information, how do we actually um, efficiently connect to building owners? 
And um, just a little bit of, a, of history, uh, our uh, founders, um, uh, Donnell and Keith, uh, came from, uh, uh, I would say, the, the political uh, landscape. And uh, that idea was uh, an idea that came from them, obviously, that will never come from an engineer, engineer like me. Uh, but the, co the combination of, uh, you know, the, the technical aspect of, of putting together the tools and the outreach to, uh, to politics and to organizations and communities really is, is a very unique uh, combination. Um, so the, the key component uh, that when we do um, community-based organizing is really to create an advisory board, right? And that uh, bo uh, uh, advisory board is comprised of local uh, stake uh, stakeholders, typically uh, building owner associations. That's one really uh, example or, um, uh, or any type of, you know, decision makers. And uh, we help this advisory board is, is, is critical and it's really helping us um, because first, they are local as, and uh, so and the community, uh, community vibe, uh, all the vibes around the community about the, the history and the potential challenges. So they can feedback, you know, give their feedback uh, so that we can refine our outreach strategies, right? And at time, uh, they, they can assist us uh, engaging uh, building owners. You can see that on the on the pics that we organize uh, events, meetings, uh, all this, you know, with uh, in combination and uh, cooperation uh, with um, with local stakeholders. Next. Um, so uh, once we uh, we reach out and have the first communication with the building owner, uh, we continue to use our platform. We kind of introduce our, uh, our, um, or the building owners, or, or prospects, should I say, right, uh, to the great tools that we, uh, that we are offering. Uh, first, through our website, uh, we provide a, a lot of information about uh, local uh, programs, what makes sense. We, uh, we have questionnaires, for instance, so that uh, building owners can uh, reach out to us and explain a little bit what their needs are, uh, what the status of their building is, if they are, for instance, very close to a, uh, uh, looking for a new heating and cooling system, for instance. So all this is just like opening the door, right, to, to great uh, um, pieces of information, right? We also do that through uh, <coughs> social media uh, pages. Um, and uh, we use basically our local stakeholders as ambassadors, as our brand ambassadors, and um, really to, to help uh, sharing the information about those local uh, programs again through uh, those uh, uh, trusted sources <clears throat> moving on um, another aspect of uh, of our uh, search uh, or organization i would say is uh, really to to approach elected officials right uh, that's uh, another key part of our um, of a community outreach uh, and the reason for that is um, um, most uh, a lot of officials i would say um uh depending on where they are right mostly on the west coast east coast um uh are really part of the combat for uh climate change right this is part of the agenda or their agenda and this is really helping us and helping everybody basically uh, through their relationships um, we try to connect they can uh, they have often helped us uh, to uh, connect to their constituent and uh, provide referrals um, so it can be done and that have been done through newsletters uh, on their letterheads um, and we have on our my our colleagues basically uh, have attended office hours to see our present to be uh, to offer a lot of flexibility for building owners to attend those uh, events and learn about uh, what's going on in, in the communities and ways to answer their questions um, uh, so um, you know just sharing one example of um, of the type of uh, uh, project and outreach uh, that that we are doing, and uh, um, as as I mentioned before, right, uh, we have great tools, great platform uh, that relies on the series of zeros and ones, right. Uh, but the human aspect of, especially at the 
outreach level is absolutely critical. We need to, to show, of course, COVID-19 has kind of um, uh, slowed us down a little bit, but nevertheless, we are using those type of webinars and so on or, or techniques to, uh, to continue our outreach um, uh, quite efficiently still. The next slide is about uh, one example. Um, and this one, uh, where we actually work very um, uh, closely with um, elected officials. Um, so we uh, put together uh, co-branded materials, which was very powerful, that really helped with uh, um, bringing a lot of trust uh, to the building owners. And um, so we started um, uh, basically by, by ident identifying a, uh, a zip code. Uh, this, this example is about uh, a zip code in the North Bronx in New York, where we targeted buildings with the goal to uh, kind of select or screen, I would say, the best uh, buildings that would be candidates for heat pumps. Um, so this uh, this was one example. This is one example of a successful marketing campaign uh, that was uh, sponsored by uh, the NYSODA, which is a uh, New York State um, Energy Research and Development Authority, uh, where we were able to actually build uh, a very solid uh, pipeline. Um, so uh, just wanted to uh, share uh, that uh, that successful. Uh, example that um, allowed Block Power to uh, put um, put its name out, right? That's how we started uh, prior to go uh, and and open up to other states, to um, to the West Coast, for instance, and also several cities and states in the Midwest. Um, so next slide, please. So um, as you understand, just to summarize a little bit. Uh, Block Power has a uh, two-pronged solution, right? Approach uh, uh, that utilizes uh, that uses a uh, an advanced technology and also a communication and, and data platform, right? Along with the community organizing, um, that's how we reach out to the building owners, right? But is this sufficient, right? Is this is this enough? Um, yes, we we have. Um, a good part of the answer, the answer is yes, but is this really enough? And um, we often look back to the, uh, a little bit to the past, um, because we should not forget what happened uh, with solar um, about 10 years ago, right? And how much um, we're not, we're left behind. So all this um, is still a little bit painful to absorb and to recognize, but at the same time, that gives us the tools to do better uh, for, this, for this turn, right? Uh, that is now broadly expanding electrification, right? Uh, so not everything was bad with solar, don't get me wrong, right? There, there was some example of uh, LMI community solar uh, that, um, you know, we did see some 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 benefits in some states, right? Um, but uh, the 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 lessons learned at that time remain more or less um, the same or or important today, right? So what didn't work with the the solar uh, PV right or explosion I would say, right? Um, that we have uh, encountered this past ten years. Um, well, um, there's, there's a several reasons, right? One is access to capital, right? Um, so that's something that was intended to, uh, to be available for everybody, but uh, LMI did not have that capability to, to invest in such technology. Um, uh, secondly, uh, incentives were really, you know, were available through tax credit, which was almost a nonsense when we talk about LMI, right? Uh, so that was not the right type of incentive to actually promote a new technology and make it av available for everyone. And another, another example that comes to mind is about uh, what I call distortion in e electric rates. Um, as a matter of fact, LMI, uh, some LMI uh, buildings were able to um, uh, to capture or, or to sign on um, uh, electric rates that were very favorable and unfortunately the the incentive that came out of uh, solar uh, pv 
uh, programs were even higher than than that uh, uh, than that, that than that rate. So that that didn't make too much sense, unfortunately. So uh, again, we are in a great situation still with with the PV, but let's uh, pivot uh, to electrification and learn from the past. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Um, so I have uh, a couple of uh, slides left uh, that really go a little bit deeper into the challenges of a large scale deployment of electrification. Um, so, and, and I think I kind of put together the, those, those slides to, um, uh, to come up with five key challenges. Um, as I uh, just mentioned, you know, upfront cost is um is re will remain an issue and, and remains an issue for lmi there's there's no doubt about this um in uh, in my career i had the chance to work for enterprise community partners um and i learned a lot from my colleagues uh, that about financing of you know affordable housing right um lmi um and i learned that at times um uh, up to you know five or uh, five to 15 different sources of, of, of financing um, is, is necessary to, to put a project together, right? Um, uh, so, and, and sometimes even, you know, it's not even enough, right? And, and a project cannot go through. Uh, so that's, that's really something that we have looked at and, and find a way uh, to, have, to, to avoid that, that, that situation. And we all know that electrification um, it's not cheap. This is an expensive update, uh, upgrade, a building upgrade, where we are touching or replacing uh, the entire heating, the entire cooling, and sometimes the domestic hot water, right? We install new stove. So if you remove that, I mean, those are the systems in the building, right? So it's, it's a major renovation and unfortunately very expensive. That's why uh, looking into that, um, uh, Block Power looked at a, a financing solution that um, uh, that is actually a lease offer, right? Um, and uh, there, there's many benefits uh, around that. And uh, we we have been partnering with financial partners uh, such as uh, Goldman Sachs, for instance. We have had, you know, I mentioned that they chipped in into $63 million investment, but we have had um, a longer relationship with, with them in particular, um, that we put together a, a, a program basically uh, to offer that, that lease offer. So that, that lease is a system where uh, Block Power uh, develop, owns and operates the assets, the assets being uh, heat pumps, for instance, right? Um, so uh, there's no per se a, a capital investment directly from uh, from the building owner, right? Um, not only that, but um, we put together a um, uh, a system that if the owner doesn't have any um, money at all available, we can put together and plug power takes the risk of a no money down. So it means that all the development of the project uh, until we sign a an energy uh, service agreement with a building owner um, is at no, I mean, it's no money and, and Block Power is taking the risk uh, on that. And um, what is in return, the building owner, um, similarly to a car, right? Leasing, leasing a car um, pays monthly uh, uh, bill, uh, monthly lease payments uh, back to uh, Block Power, right? Um, and uh, we try to make this uh, lease as uh, smooth uh, as possible, uh, meaning that the way that we are set up, uh, sending it up is on multi-years. We are talking, you know, 10 to 15 years um, uh, lease period, right? It's a long term, but um, those heat pumps have, have a long life cycle as well. Um, and uh, the we try to make the payment um, uh, really, at uh, make it really easy for uh, for the building owners, the NMI building owners. Uh, we look at the current expenditures today, and we try to match the number 
to the new lease payment plus uh, the new um, energy expenditure, right, uh, post construction, just to make it um, cash flow, you know, even uh, of some sort. Uh, we do also include the, the maintenance in, uh, in the lease uh, payment uh, so that uh, the building owner just um, have, have an equipment uh, that should operate, that, uh, that should be performant. Um, and uh, so, in short, this is what, what we do with the lease payment. Uh, next slide. Um, another challenge is about constructability. Can any building in the US uh, uh, be a good candidate for heat pumps? I would say more or less. However, the complexity, uh, therefore, the cost of uh, upgrading might vary greatly. Uh, two examples here um, on the slide. Uh, one, and it's particularly true when we talk about dense urban environment, where we do have buildings that are attached. In this case, you know, we have facades. We cannot touch anything on the facade here, right? Everybody, uh, I hope, uh, agree with that. On, a, on each side of, uh, of the buildings is attached to another building. So that may make this uh, this building a little bit more complicated and more complex to um, uh, to improve and upgrade to uh, electric uh, heat pumps, for instance. And um, I, you know, we need to keep our uh, fingers crossed that there's a good uh, shaft in the building that allow to run refrigerant lines, electrical uh, between all uh, building components. On the right hand side, so where, where do we install those uh, SOC pumps, right? We don't have, we cannot put them in a basement, for instance, uh, uh, or any other mechanical room to uh, uh, to replace the boiler, right? We need to find, we have an outdoor unit and an indoor unit. And outdoor units are um, typically, this is what we have found, uh, installed uh, on the roofs. Uh, on the roof. So on the roof, well, this one is, is a nice roof because it's new. Parapets have plenty of room to uh, anchor uh, outdoor units. We can also have, uh, we also have plenty of uh, uh, room availability uh, uh, to put a dunnage and a stack, you know, those outdoor um, um, uh, units, compressors and so on. Um, so this is a great, great thing, but sometimes we really scratch our heads and not every building, unfortunately, is equal uh, when it comes to their uh, their size and, and, uh, and their conditions, right? So constructability is a factor uh, that often leads to a more complex and more um, pricey uh, retrofit. Habits uh, is another another thing. I mean, those those buildings, we are... We work with buildings, uh, at least in, in New York, right, Boston and, and Chicago. Uh, those buildings are 100 years old, right? They have been designed to have a central boiler. The boiler have used coal at one point, then uh, fuel oil. They have been converted to gas. So the habit is to have a boiler, a central boiler, right? With electrification, we are coming up with a, a total different approach, right? And building owners don't want to be guinea pigs, right? Uh, there's a cost associated. It's not a market rate versus NMI discussion. It's it's a little bit everybody, right? Uh, everyone in in, uh, in this case, nobody wants to be the guinea pigs, right? And uh, we have seen that nobody will change their habits unless there are um, government or local government mandates to move away from natural gas, for instance, right? Uh, or any type of fossil fuel. Or they are uh, amazing in, uh, incentives, you know, offers you cannot refuse uh, that really uh, make the building owner steal their head and say, well, I should probably at least give it a try, right? Um, so uh, without this, right, without a clear um, information, um, you know, sharing uh, the, the knowledge, uh, keeping the uh, great information, keeping building owners updated into you know with new technologies sharing case studies of of buildings that are similar to theirs where an installation have been uh, done successfully is absolutely critical and i know that the coalition is is working toward that which is which is fantastic so just wanted to reiterate that habits um, is is a little bit of a problem for us and and we need to have uh, great colleagues to uh, uh, to explain what it is and and that uh, limit that we have uh, a process with limited risks. Uh, moving to the to the next slide, which is challenge four, um, affordability. Right, even if we try to find the the right incentives, 
uh, to put together a great offer to the building owners, uh, to the NMI building owners who can, at the end, you know, afford uh, that uh, that technology. Uh, we still compete with fossil fuel, and the the the, the cost, the the price, or the rate of natural gas is still uh, the competition here, right? Um, I haven't seen so far, um, uh, you know, a uh, a project where um, the operating cost of of a heat pumps uh, with electricity um, is is way much better than with natural with the border with natural gas, at least on the heating side, right? This is this is tough right now. Um, look, looking at uh, DOE website and EIA um, analysis or projections, there's, however, some hopes uh, that fossil fuels are going to continue uh, a very steep increase. Uh, and uh, I'm also very hopeful that because of that, uh, we will see um, uh, the price of electricity not taking as much increase and make uh, electrification uh, a better, uh, I mean, ultimately a, a better solution for uh, for everyone. Um, so uh, there's also two things I wanted to share with you, uh, along with installing those air source heat pumps, or water source heat pumps, you know, other technologies. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, at, for, for the most part, we need to include other costs, right? Uh, one being, uh, uh, the cost of upgrading electrical the electrical service um, that is also an add-on that is that is very tough to absorb uh, for you know uh, on the price um, of the project cost uh, the cost of demolition is also can be also prohibitive uh, at times um, and unfortunately uh, for the uh, for the most part uh, we abandon the system in place um and leave the radiators and and the borders as, as they are um and hope for the best in the future to actually remove those um there's also another reason why the owner for some reason would like to keep that as potentially a backup um again moving to electrification is great um however we will be limiting um uh, the the building owner will be limited to a, to a single source of of energy being electricity and they are a bit scared about that and uh, lastly, um, I have a slide about maintenance. Although we are talking about electric uh, systems, uh, there's still some moving parts. Uh, some of the parts in the electric uh, heat pump are mechanical parts, a fan, for instance, and they need to be maintained, right? It's not uh, a maintenance-free um, uh, system. And for LMI, that's why in our lease offer, we include uh, the operating cost or the maintenance cost within our offering within our lease offer uh, for the main uh, and the main reason for that is uh, um, affordable housing have um, you know issues uh, many times with human you know resources and capacity at the building you have superintendent that sometimes manage more than one building they are running around all day trying to stop fire here and there and don't have the additional capacity to or resources to to maintain those so as part of the lease um, uh, the professional, in fact, professional, the contractor who install the seat pump system uh, actually have a contract with Block Power to come twice a year and make sure that all the system uh, work uh, at their best. Right. Um, um, well, that kind of concludes my uh, presentation, and I will be happy to take um, a few questions. Great. Thank you so much, Dom. Um, the questions are pouring in, um, so um, we'll start with a we'll start with an easy one. Um, how's your Canadian portfolio? Do you have any projects in Canada at this point, or any plans for Canadian projects? No, and my accent is from France. If it was the underlying question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, right now we are well indeed uh, focusing on, um, on on the U.S., which is uh, a huge market, as you can imagine. Um, yes, I mean, we are in contact uh, with uh, people in Toronto, and I know that those uh, uh, systems work really well in very cold climate. We have a cold climate air source heat pumps, and uh, yes, hopefully soon. But uh, we'll be we are open to discussions for sure. Great. 
Um, do you ever have questions about the impact on the grid? Um, you know, as more and more buildings are moving over to electricity, as we're expanding the transportation network onto the electric grid, um, you're working in a bunch of different states. And so, like, what's your impression about the impact on the grid? Um, do we have the grid to handle the electrification of the transportation and building sector? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So this is really a, a local issue, right? It, it's at the utility level, right? And 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 the answer really depends uh, on on the utility. Um, I would say, um, you know, uh, in the Bay Area, um, San Fran, San Francisco, um, my understanding is, um, you know, cooling is not available in every building, right? So bringing um, a, a cooling system, heat pump will be heating and cooling, will certainly bring comfort, but additional um, uh, consumption, right, during the summer, and that will actually ultimately uh, uh, have an impact on the, on the grid, uh, on the demand. Um, you know, that said, you know, that could be also a good complement to a uh, um, renewable technology and resources. If they have surplus of uh, production, you know, we can, uh, uh, that that should maybe um, limit a little bit the, the issue. Um, in other, in another state where uh, the capacity is plenty, I, I don't expect any uh, specific issues, right? Uh, where uh, peaking, for instance, in the south happen uh, obviously during the summer, but um, you know, during the winter, we, we, all the infrastructure should actually be able to um, to manage and you know operate the the heat pumps. When it comes to colder climate, um, that's where it's a little bit it's a little bit of a crystal ball. And I, and I'm personally, I mean, professionally, personally working towards um, that uh, that issue that could happen of peaking during the winter, right? And that is something that, uh, along with bringing electric vehicle and having additional electric uses um, uh, usage, uh, can can really be um, uh, an issue. You know, we we uh, we work actively to to try to avoid uh, that that situation, right? So there's uh, the combination of of heat pumps um, along with uh, distributed um, energy resources (DERs), right? Is in my view the the way to go, and uh, that will be uh, imperative to really work um, with that com combination, that that combination of technology, uh, especially in um, in the colder climate zones in the, in the U.S. Great. Um, can you clarify what um, types of buildings you focus on, um, and um, like what kind of building stock you focus on, and then where are you working um, currently in the Bay Area? Yes. Um, so the the type of of buildings are um, essentially small to mid sized buildings, right? We do a little bit of uh, commercial buildings. Uh, we have uh, Block Power had uh, um, a, a relationship uh, with a um, houses of worship um, that started, I would say, you know, with the inception of the company. Uh, so we kind of heritage that that uh, relationship, uh, but uh, for the most part, we work with say uh, multifamily buildings and, and residential, right? Uh, LMI market rate. Um, um, and we do um, individual homes. Um, our uh, although our focus is really on LMI and multifamily buildings, um, you know, this is this is a big challenge, and that's why I put those few slides to actually share with you that the complexity of working on a brick building, masonry building is, is it's it's tough, it's tough, right? And uh, we have our, most of our, I mean, a lot of our clients are actually individual homes and so on. Um, so we um, uh, we work and, and most of our projects so far uh, in the Bay Area have been with individual homes. Uh, you know, I wanted to uh, disclose that our goal and target remains uh, with the multifamily buildings. That's you, the, we can find ways to, to reach out and, and get those projects going. And, and where in the Bay Area are you offering services or is it not restricted at all? No, it's not restricted. I mean, we have project in Oakland, for instance. Um, that's 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 how we started. I, again, you know, we started about you know less than six months ago, so it's it's still very new. We also, yeah, 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 and uh, we work also in um, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, also, we have uh, actually we have uh, four of our um, uh, colleagues are actually live <laughs> live and, and operate from uh, from the West Coast. 
great. And so if, if somebody has a building or there's a building owner that's interested in seeing if they can work with you, they should really be filling out their building intake survey that you see right down here, right? And on the bottom last screen. Absolutely. Yes, no, absolutely. And and that's that the easiest way. It's a smooth way. <laughs> no no string attached, as we always say, right? Just like, hey, to share a little bit uh, what's your what the needs are. Um, and, and a few questions, like simple questions. Um, so this is a link. I, I don't think this, uh, you know, the, the exact link or, or uh, in order to, to access that link is uh, intake.blockpower.io. So I repeat intake, I-N-T-A-C-K-E dot blockpower.io. Uh, right. The link showed up when uh, maybe when when we uh, when we uh, go over that that link, but just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody has uh, the possibility or, uh, to um, to actually write, write it down. But you can also access it through our website, uh, blockpower.io. So, okay, um, there's a number of questions about refrigerants and the global warming potential of refrigerants, and how do you guys look at refrigerants? Are you um, looking at um, some of the better and better refrigerants, um, what's your what's your take on refrigerants, Tom? Yeah, no, this is this is a question that uh, we get all the time. Um, and right now, I mean, we we have um, you know we work with with key manufacturers, right? Not as if we want to not take any risk, but we work uh, with. Uh, you know, the Daikin, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu of the world, right, um, LG, um, all those, pre, uh, you know, offer really great, great technologies. There's a move towards um, R32 as a refrigerant, moving away for for 10A. Uh, um, we, we have been looking also at um, refrigerants um, such as CO2. Um, the applications for uh, for this refrigerant, unfortunately, uh, are not great for heating and cooling. This is our conclusion uh, based on uh, very deep conversations with manufacturers who have been trying to 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 bring a CO2 uh, refrigerant uh, equipment in the U.S. market. I know there's a, there's a lot of uh, um, pilots going on in Europe right now. Uh, the best application and talking about you know the the Bay Area and the, and the West Coast um, is, in my view, and the most impact um, that we can actually do with electrification is looking at technologies that use CO2 refrigerant as uh, uh, CO2 as a refrigerant. I'm sorry for a domestic hot water uh, applications. Those work really great. Uh, there's enough. Uh, we call that the lift. Basically, this is um, uh, the the differential between. Uh, the input and output, I kind of oversimplified here, but the, domestic, the bottom line is domestic hot water, uh, electrification of domestic hot water system away from a, a boiler or domestic hot water maker um, will, is working really well with, um, uh, you know, for, for, for the HW, right, uh, with, with a CO2 uh, refrigerant. Uh, other than that, I mean, larger system use ammonia, for instance. <laughs> That was the refrigerant of choice uh, when the first heat pumps came, <laughs> I think in the 1800s. Um, but, you know, the ammonia smells uh, and people freak out when they start smelling ammonia, unfortunately there. Uh, but that, you know, so that, <laughs> in short, my, my position, but uh, always on the lookout uh, for those, say, uh, as soon as manufacturers, you know, come up, uh, with uh, with those new technologies, I say we are ready. We are, you know, big company as such as the one that I um, uh, mentioned. You know, we we are all in. Yeah, and I will say the coalition works with most of the manufacturers of space heating and water heating in, in North America, and they are all working on this issue. And we're going to see just a rapid transition to much lower GWP refrigerants over the next five years. Um, and this might be nice as we see the uptake of heat pump technology. We only have time for one more question, unfortunately, but you see Dom's contact information right there. 170 organizations tuned in here. Um, and so please feel free to reach out to Dom. A number of people have asked if you guys are hiring in California. I'm sure you can go onto the website and see, ask Dom for a job. But just the last question will be, where have you deployed or will you be deploying your block maps tool beyond Northern, beyond New York City? Yes, so um, 
right now we we are in contact with the city of philadelphia um and we would love to expand uh, on the west coast for sure but let's uh if anyone is uh open for for that discussion let's let's do it awesome contact dom dom so exciting you know the, the buzz is real you guys are you guys are doing it you guys are leading in the way that we need electrification to be led thank you so much for presenting with us thank you all for joining us at bdc presents come back next month you can hear about the retrofit ready heat pump water heater i'm very excited about that contact dom work with block power um it's going to be um, really the future of building electrification they're doing it here in the present Thank you all very much. Thank Keep you very much. I really appreciate the time. Bye-bye. Right.